Hey guys, Greg at Best Choice Trailers here. Today we're going to take a walk around a Big Tex 14 FT. Shown here is a 7 by 18 foot, 14,000 pound. So not to be confused with the sister trailer, the TL, the FT is a full deck tilt, meaning this whole entire setup is tilt, whereas the TL would have a tilt maybe from their back, typically 16 foot, and then whatever's left would be your stationary. So this is an 18 foot full deck tilt. Now to be clear, I always measure gravity tilts because you do get a lot of discrepancy in the industry as to how these are measured. This particular one measures about 18 foot eight inches from the rear to the front headache rack, even though it's called an 18. Uh, a lot of times these tails, sometimes they'll count all of it, some of it. This one I would say uh, basically doesn't count that cutout from basically a little forward to that back. So again, just shy of 19 foot on this particular unit. It's gonna weigh just a little bit over 3,000 pounds. So on a 14,000 GVW, you're gonna end up with about 11,000 pound of payload. If on a rare occasion you need a little more than that, you will get another roughly 15% tongue weight to the truck side, which is gonna net out to about another 2,000 pounds. Uh, most everything you see here is gonna be standard equipment. So we'll take a look at the front. Two and five sixteenth inch adjustable coupler is standard. These are the new Demco uh, Easy Latch couplers, 21,000 pound rated, which I believe is by far the highest out of a two bolt coupler setup. So these would actually work with triple axles as well. It is cast, not stamped. And if you're not familiar, these just lift up and they'll kind of glide down as you put uh, the jack uh, down on the ball. Safety chain holder farther back under the Big Tex logo, but I actually find up here is a pretty convenient place to put them as well. You've got your zip <clears throat> breakaway cable. These are nice. Uh, just give you that flexibility and pull out the slack so there's nobody, you know, dragging these down on the road and getting tore up. They are a safety device. So basically, if you're not familiar, these would pull out in the event of a break, uh, disconnected trailer. Uh, say somebody uses the wrong size ball, it's their first time using it, whatnot. Um, this would pull out, activate your breakaway battery, and it would lock your brakes up. 12,000 pound jack, standard equipment. Uh, if you're not familiar, it's got two zerts on it for serviceability. It is bolted on, so you know, ease, easily replaceable should you need to do so. If you're not familiar, uh, these are nice because you don't need to carry around a block of wood or similar to get the leg extension. There's an inner leg with a pull pin that'll spring up and then your handle up top is going to crank down on the outer sleeve. So you got tons of adjustment here. These are the same jacks you're going to see on your bigger gooseneck type trailers. This is equipped with a seven pin RV blade style plug. Standard on most all pickup trucks in the last 20 years. Uh, one nice feature, it does have the color uh, for each function on the end of the plug. That's not typically on them. Certainly a nice feature. Uh, this also has a modular harness. So generally you got a three-piece harness, one front, one that runs the length of the trailer, and one that's going to hit your lights to the rear. Chain tray, standard equipment. Notice it's got a pair of weep holes in there so your water drains out spare tire mount as well up in the a-frame like most trailers similar to this it's gonna have a six inch channel full wrap tongue six inch channel mainframe and then you've also got a six inch bed frame that's nestled inside your mainframe six d-ring standard equipment which is nice you got four for your equipment and then you got two up front which you could use for a implement tie down uh, one nice feature and i'll show you this in a second uh, this latch handle is one of the nicer ones that I've seen from a how it deploys. Basically, you got a pull pin. I already pulled it. And this basically would just pull up to release. And then whenever you come off, it's nice because you can latch it. It's actually got a skateboard type grip tape. Latch it when you come back down and just step on it. Very simple design. Uh, two by eight pressure treated pine standard equipment. Removable fenders are also standard. Now this is nice for a few different reasons. We get some folks that do actually uh, wanna haul cars on these occasionally, not for a primary use, primary generally is equipment. But if you wanna haul a car, the only real downside to this trailer would be 
Uh, you've got drop axles, which are great for loading. Low angle, but it gives you a taller fender reveal. When you drop the trailer down four inches, you get four more inches of fender. Obviously, fender height's limited because of your tire wheel assembly. But with a removable fender, it makes it nice. You can take these fenders off, and if you do, you're going to end up with probably eight, nine inches of fender, or I'm sorry, tire reveal, which is uh, generally uh, just fine to load most all cars. Uh, to give you an idea, right now I've got a 370Z. Uh, I think my door opens at right about 10 and a half inches. It'll just barely clear a uh, cargo trailer. So a trail like this, no problem. You take that fender off, I can get that door open without an issue. So again, not a car hauler, but with a removable fender, it does open up some added flexibility. One thing for other guys, maybe using it for more equipment style, uh, you take that fender off, you can put your, put your forks uh, of a forklift either side of that tire and uh, get your stuff on from the side of the trailer if you got more than one skid. You got one skid, you probably put it up front there. So a couple different ways you can do a trailer like this. This is what I call a nestled bed frame. Um, basically on this, you have a tongue and a mainframe that are stacked and then you've got a nestled bed frame that's inside. So you've got full width 83 inches on this between fender but your actual tilt deck's gonna be about 75 inches or so wide. And some guys say, man, that's cutting it close. Well, at the end of the day, you've got eight more inches, uh, four inches per side. Your tire on almost anything you're gonna put on this is gonna be on that deck. And if it's over by an inch, it really isn't gonna matter. But again, your tilt is gonna be about 75 between the fenders. You're gonna be about 83 inches. Again, we said uh, about just shy of 19 foot length. Ideal for most piece of equipment. I think your average skid steer is probably going to come in right around 12. Uh, on a trailer like this, you're probably going to want to move your equipment up just a little bit. So on a tilt trailer, uh, you're going to have drop axles, which are going to get you a nice low angle. But then uh, you're also going to slide your axles on a tilt up, generally just a hair. Uh, so on this particular unit, uh, I would keep your equipment mostly over the wood, um, the wood area right where your D-rings are at. Uh, your tread plate tail at the back is going to measure probably two and a half feet. It's going to give you about 16 foot or so uh, forward of that for your equipment. Ideal for your skid steers um, and whatnot. Should have, should have plenty of room left uh, for most sizes. So again, we do have a double broke uh, fender standard. Again, removable front and rear. You've got a 235-80 R16 10-ply. It's a load range E radial tire. It's got a Dexter brand axle with the newer style never adjust brakes. If you're not familiar, uh, just like a car, it'll self-tension throughout the life of the pad. Uh, very minimal maintenance required. Uh, this does also have the Easy Lube hubs. So behind uh, that cap, a little bit too cold today to get, get it to come out. Uh, but behind that cap, you've got a Grease Zert. Uh, I would clean the grease out, and then you can grease that zert when you see fresh grease come out. Go ahead and stop. And we can show you here, but it's fairly fairly simple for a homeowner to do their own bearing maintenance. Between the uh, tires, you've got a slipper spring suspension, standard on most 14,000-pound trailers. It's a little bit heavier than your traditional eye-to-eye -eye suspension system. So this is a gravity tilt. I'll show you in a second. I'll, I'll pop the uh, handle and show you, but it basically just picture a seesaw is essentially what you're looking at. So behind, you've got the one set of rings. You've also got a stake pocket for additional tie downs as well. This is available in different lengths, by the way. The full tilt, I believe you can get in a 16, 18, and 20. And that's all non-stationary full deck tilt. It does come in different GVWs as well. I'm going to go ahead and pick the handle up. So that's in the open position. So again, you get a better picture here uh, of the trailer itself and the width. So again, you got 75 inches. Heavier the object is, faster it's going to come down. And simply put your 
and it's latched. A lot of manufacturers, you can't do that. That is a nice little detail, I will say, that they've done on this. You can latch that um, from the deck itself. Pretty slick. This does have a 16-inch on center channel cross member, standard equipped. Again, it is available in different lengths depending on your equipment. We also have different sizes, different GVWs, different brands. Uh, if you give us a shout with uh, you know, what you're trying to haul, we'll try to get you in the best uh, piece of equipment for what you're hauling. Uh, you can reach us at 717-220-4220. Or you can visit us on the web at www.bestchoicetrailers.com. Thanks for looking.